Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how to process text files with the built-in functions from Python. There are several libraries you're welcome to explore, which are dedicated to working with all types of files, including HTML, CSV, Excel files, and more. However, today we're simply covering the built-in functions for processing text files. Our first step is to create a file object in Python. On line three, I have written the syntax for creating a file object. The first step is providing any file object name you would like, and then we're going to assign it a file object by calling the open function. The open function takes in two inputs. The first input is the name of the file, including the extension. The second input is the file mode, and this will indicate how you wish to interact with the file. For example, on line four, I have listed some file options. You can use the string r to indicate you wish to read the file. You can use the string w to indicate you wish to write to the file. If the file already exists, then it'll overwrite the file. The third option you can use is the string A to indicate you wish to append or add the data to the end of the document. The last thing is always remember to close your file when you're finished using it. Now that we've covered outputting, let's write to a text file the words hi and hello. Step one, let's give it a file name, for example, my file, and we're going to assign it a file object by using the open function. Um, let's go ahead and provide a file name. So let's say my, my document. And here we also need to provide the extension. So you could provide txt as a text file or dat as a, as a dat file. They're both um, sources that contain characters or just you know, regular text. So let's just go ahead and use text, but you're welcome to use the dat extension as well. And let's go ahead and write the string w because we wish to write to this file. That means that if it um, already exists, then we're going to overwrite uh, to it. But that shouldn't be a problem since it doesn't exist at the moment. It, it will be created once we write this. Let's go ahead and use our file object, specifically the write function, to write anything we wish to write. I believe we wanted to write first hi, and then I want to write hello. And one, the last thing we do before we execute our code is we're going to close our file now that we're finished with it. So this is almost complete. If we were to write this, I want to, in, I want to note that your write method or your write function is not going to include an indentation after each of these. It's not like the print uh, method or the print function. And so you'll notice that it's going to be all pasted together. If you do want there to be an indentation, you're going to use the new line character. So now that we've written the new line character, when I execute this code, it's going to overwrite my document.txt since we chosen the option w. And you'll notice that it's going to say hi, indent, and then on the next line, hello. What if I had altered this document so that it was append? So now notice that this document, it says hi and hello. If I were to append to this, then it would append hi and hello to this document. So it's going to repeat it twice. There we go. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. And that's really how we output to documents. It's pretty straightforward. And that's one of the nice things about working with Python. Now let's go ahead and transition over to reading from a text document or inputting from a text document. Um, so first things first is let's look at my document.txt. I changed the data. So now that it has the three values, three, two, one. And our first goal is actually to be able to print out the first, um, the first line. So we want the value three. And then our next goal is to be able to get the total of all these values. So three plus two plus one, which is the value six. So let's get started. The first step is going to be the same. We're going to create a file object. We can choose to give it any name. So I could call it file or my file or really any name you'd like. Next up is using the open function. Um, it first takes in the name of the file from which we would wish to read from. In this case, it's going to be my document.txt. Make sure not to misspell it, or else it's going to um, throw an error or an exception. We want to be able to read from this document, so I'm going to use the file mode open string r to be able to read. Um, let's say I just want to be able to read in one input. So I want to be able to read in just the value 3, this first line. So let's get some text input. And how exactly do I read that first line? Well, you're going to use the name of your file object, dot. And then you're going to use the function read line. And just like that, we have successfully read in the, the value. And so if I go ahead and print out text input, it should be the string 3. Um, the last thing we always want to do and remind ourselves to do just for good practice, uh, we want to close our file. Let's go ahead and check our output. Notice we get the, the value 3. But what if I concatenate it with something else? So plus something else. So if I were to put this together, supposedly this is one string and this is another string. 
But how should the output look like? We have three, indentation, space, something else. Now, the space, something else, I purposely wrote that. That's, that's fine. The three makes complete sense. But where's this indentation coming from? Where's that extra indentation that might uh, mess with your output, especially with the assignment that you're working on? Well, that's actually because when we read the line, we read the entire line, and we're taking it in as a string. We're reading in the character three, followed by the new line character. This indentation from the first line to the next line actually gets read in. It's the new line character that's getting read in. What if I don't want that new line character? What if I don't want my output to look like this? Then we're going to have to strip away the white spaces. So you can use the strip method. And what that'll do is it'll remove both leading, which means at the beginning, and trailing, which means at the end, white spaces. So it'll remove all of those white spaces. Um, so if we were to do that, then that'll function just as well. But it's more common to remove the trailing white spaces. And so you would call rstrip to remove those trailing white spaces. And that's if you want to take it in as a string. Now, the other thing to consider is what if I don't want this exactly as a, as a string, but I actually want it as, as an integer. I want it as the value 3. Then we have to go ahead and cast it to the correct data type. So I would need to cast this to the correct data type, which is an integer. So I could perform mathematical operations on it. So something as simple as addition. So let's say 3 plus 1. Now I should get the value of 4. And so it seems simple enough. However, there are some things to consider. Uh, number one, you always have to create your file object. And the file mode is going to dictate how you're accessing uh, that file. So in this case, we chose to read from it, which is why I used R. Um, in order to read a single line, you're going to use the read line method or the read line function. And if you want to take it in as a string, you probably want to remove those trailing white spaces. Um, however, if you want to take it in as, let's say, um, an integer or some other data type, always make sure to cast it to the appropriate type beforehand. Our last challenge is going to be uh, reading in all of these values, so 3, 2, 1, continuing until we reach the end of the file. And so let's go ahead and get started with that so we can grab a total. So first thing first, uh, for our running total, it's going to be initialized to 0. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a variable set up for our input. So let's go ahead and read the first line, which is the value 3. I'm going to go ahead and use the name of the file object, which is just file, and the read line function to do that. So here we've stored in the string 3. What we want to make sure is that this is not the end of the file. We want to keep processing while it's not the end of the file. And so if there is existing information, if this file does continue, then this string should not be empty. It should not be an empty string. However, once you reach the end of the file, um, the last thing that you'll receive is an empty string. And so what we could do to make sure that we're getting all of the information until the end is we could say while the text input is not an empty string, which means it's not the end of the file, I want to keep processing that data. And so what do I want to do now that I've gotten some input and it's not the end of the file? I want to add that to my total. So I want to make sure to add that to my total. But once again, this is a string. I've made sure to read this in as a string. I haven't casted it yet into an integer. So let's go ahead and cast that text input into an integer. So now it becomes the value 3, which I'm adding to my total. And then the last thing we want to do is um, we want to make sure to get the next text input. We want to read the next line to check that it's not the end of the file. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck in an infinite loop. So we're going to say that our text input, we're going to assign it the next line. So we're going to go ahead and read that next line. And so let's go ahead and just review how this works. We initialized our total to 0. We read the first line. And assuming that it's not finished, assuming that there's uh, continued um, the file continues, what we're going to do is we're going to cast that input, whatever we got. In this case, it's the value 3 to our total and add that to our total. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the next input, which is the next line 2. And we're going to check that it, while it's not the end of the file, let's cast that to an integer and add that to our total. And let's get the next value, which is the value 1. So here's the next line. Cast Since it's not an empty string, we're going to cast it to an integer, add that to our total. And then we're going to read the next line. And finally, at this point, there's really nothing left. So there's going to be an empty string. And so it's just going to terminate at that point. And uh, let's make sure to print out our total. So our total is, here we go, print out our total. Make sure to cast this to a string. Otherwise, the otherwise Python's going to complain. And we should get the value 6. There we are. So now you've successfully learned how to 
process text files in Python, please make sure to come to office hours if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you programmers later.